Welcome to the Magic City Spotlight, BM Highlights. Everything is looking up like a skylight. It's all love, here's your invite. You ought to know we keep it cool, no frostbite. Now come and follow me as we take flight. The intellect, precision, vision, homegrown insights. Feeling a bit of the pulse, cherishing every precious life. Working effectively, holding the reins, keeping it tight. For me, hey. we the culture of the city. Vulcan lit up the night sky for the birth of shuttles. Working for soldiers, shoulder to fight. Not we restoring the feeling. Our presence is an honor. That red light don't die. That is my Birmingham. Shining in the spotlight where you can hear the city speak. This is where the city meets. From politics to industry, from futurist to history, consistently. Reppin' the beat, ham home of the red light D. I'm tuned in, you need to get like light me. Spotlight D, ham highlights. Everything is looking up like a skylight. It's all love, here's your invite. You ought to know we keep it cool, no frostbite. Welcome One to the time for Kevin spotlight. Black Boy Edward. We ham highlights. Shout out Rudy. Everything is looking up Learn like a skylight. Woofing. It's all love, here's your invite. Be you ham. know we keep the it cool, whole red light no D. Frostbite. Team of 10, from the beginning to the end. Good morning, Birmingham. It is a beautiful Saturday in Zamunda. That's exactly what I call Birmingham now, Mayor. That's, that's exactly how it goes. You are welcome to Magazine Spotlight right here at V949 WATV, where V stands for Variety. And y'all, welcome, welcome, welcome. Today, it is all about Strong Her, women leading Birmingham. And uh, when you see the uh, mayor's uh, sweatshirt on social media on Facebook. Make sure you check that out. Each March, y'all, the city of Birmingham publishes daily strong her profiles featuring under-recognized women who are leading our community. So we get to join Mayor Whipton and friends as they celebrate five years of strong her. Yes, and share Yay. stories of the women who inspire us. And yes. speaking of women who inspire us, we got Shonda Temple up in the house today, Senior Project Manager, City of Birmingham Mayor's Office. Andrea Parker, CEO of Parker and Associates uh, Associations Investment Company. Also, Terry Harville, Executive Director at the Northeast Branch and the Chief Social Impact Officer for the YMCA of Greater Birmingham. Now, that's a title, Terry. That's a, that's a real title right there. But good morning, ladies, and good morning, Mayor. How you feeling? Good morning. Good morning, everyone. You got some heavy hitters in the studio. I see. Um, shout out to Shonda Temple for leading the charge on the Stronger Campaign, Five Years Strong. Pun intended, that is. <laughs> uh, but amazing work, Shonda, for real. And the, um, the women in the studio, everybody who can't see flank, flanking my left and right are powerhouses in their own right. Um, Ms. Mm -hmm. Parker and Ms. Harville, which is the last time I'll call them by their last name today. <laughs> uh, we're in the studio and we're going to have a very good time. And if you can't see everybody on the hoodie, I'll talk about it more in the break. But the hoodie states today, Black Women Build Legacies 2. Hey. Because it's true. So we're going to get into that today. So um, passing it back to you, my friend. Man, man, before we get into the meat of the conversation, you know we always got to kind of hit it off with hot topics. Yes. And this week has been rather sizzling, okay, when it comes to a number of different great things that are going on. But the yeah. one thing that kind of hit the um, – Oh, and I, I, I have to admit, I hate commenting on social media. I really do. I hate getting into the comments. I love reading them. I just don't like, you know, putting my two cents in. But the Oscars and Sierra's dress, okay, I, I really did have to kind of mull in. And Mayor, he's just shaking his head as he's, as he's looking at me. <laughs> Sexy, sexy to me. I, I mean, well, and that was the question. You know, that was the question. Was it too sexy? There was a theme with the Oscars. Okay, so let's let's get that out the way first and foremost. Sierra's a mother. Sierra's the the wife of Russell Wilson. You know, this incredible um, football player. And folks are kind of expecting her to be a little bit more, you know, seasoned with the game as far well, as her clothing is concerned. It's not how any of this works. That's what I said too, man. Go I, ahead, um, go ahead. Come on, spit some now. Come on, help me out here. Listen, I. My opinion is that of one, a man. So who am I to comment on any woman's dress? Let's start there. Okay. I would say, two, she's a grown woman, and she can wear what she wants. Mm -hmm. And she's married. Her husband supports her. And hell, hell she, I'm sorry. I can't say that on the radio. <laughs> we just did. She been fine. <laughs> All right, y'all, they're going to dock me. No, they're not gonna, I'm going to be fine. Hell, hell is not a word. Hell is not a word. It's the place. <laughs> she can wear what she wants. I think we have a tendency to... <laughs> we have a tendency to be overcritical, mm -hmm. highly opinionated, and they want to share our opinions. I'm sorry, but no one's right or wrong in this situation. Okay. It's her dress. It's her body. It's her life. Like, everybody 
take it down 10 levels. It's yeah. cool. Terry, you have a because you you you've already given me the church look, so I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> how you feeling about the how you feeling about her 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 attire, Terry? I just felt a Baptist whooping <laughs> coming on. Now I I agree with Mayor Randall right here, 100 percent in right. all in all things considered equal. Right. But if you say now, Terry. I know you want your body to look like that. And if it did, would you wear that dress? And I just, it's not a dress. It's a fishnet. Yeah. It's a fishnet. Yeah. But she's entitled to wear it. She is. Right. And where sometimes we go wrong because she is a married woman. Her husband was there with her. Man, holding on tight. So, okay. holding on tight. Yeah. Her I would. husband was there with her. So, <laughs> you know, I just don't think my husband would let me wear it. Not there anyway. He let right. me wear it. Right. Just not for everybody to see. And yeah. so, my, my, Alabama Baptist <laughs> brain says everybody, everything is not for everybody that, that to part. see. And right. so I think about 20 years from now, what impact might it have on her children throughout their life or throughout this? Because kids are cruel. Yeah. And they go straight to the yo mama. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's a yo mama. Everybody's been seeing what yo mama okay. has. And so I, I just don't want everybody to know what my mama got. Um, but with my daughter uh, had. Uh, <laughs> but she's fine, fine. <laughs> Andrea, you, you kind of, you know, are, are accenting the same thing here. Yeah, so for me, it's uh, I, I, it's uh, I, it's kind of twofold for me. Okay. It's like, hey, she's beautiful. She's amazing. Um, she's an artist. Mm-hmm. Um, she, most times creatives do things like that. Right. But for me, it goes back to Southern roots. I just think I it's a Southern raise, thing. I wouldn't it's raise. Like, like, I wouldn't like, raise like, like this. That's I'm sorry. Right. Well, yeah. I think, look, we're talking about uh, dress. I'll, I'll say two things. One is that I feel like in other races, when it's Oscars and Grammys and other people wear things like this, we don't talk about it. No. Yeah, that's true. The other thing I would say is that it's, like we're missing a bigger picture, which is the Oscars was a good night for Birmingham natives. That's it. That's like, it. Like, you like, represent the well on on social media. Yeah, Thank yeah, you, because yeah. I did not uh, know. First of all, that was an incredible movie. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Listen, I'm not going to even front. I haven't seen it. You but, but eleven nominations and they racked up seven. Yeah. Seven out of eleven. Yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah, and and they did an incredible Producer job. Producer Birmingham, um, co-director Birmingham. Mm-hmm. Movie of the year, um, director of the year, all the other five awards they won. It's a big deal. No, and, and I'm glad that we had the opportunity to do that. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna spare a question to you, uh, to, <laughs> to to you, Shanta, <laughs> because our next hot topic is the NCAA basketball in Birmingham. Now again, I don't know nothing about NCAA either, sis. So so don't you know don't feel bad. I just like the fact that we do have the representation here in Birmingham. How you feel about that? I'm excited just to see the joy that everybody in Birmingham has it's electric yeah people are talking about it they're excited we have so many people coming into Birmingham and the other thing is our merchants are benefiting Mm -hmm. from this Mm -hmm. and you know we had COVID they had a hit but just to see the excitement that these merchants have and also we have spring homecoming happening this this weekend as well okay you know downtown was electric we had people over at the museum the baseball museum. So, yeah, people are loving on Birmingham. And nah. we're loving them right back. Yeah. And, and I think that's the thing, Mayor, that uh, a lot of folks forget to, to uh, remember about Birmingham. We're very much a sports-oriented uh, city in the fact that we actually support a lot of great different soccer, football, yeah, yeah, basketball, yeah, 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 yeah. all of that. And then to have March Madness, you know, culminate here is a beautiful thing, too. So, listen, uh, there are a couple of things to note about this. The one, res- the resident male. One is, like, we got to love ourselves. I do not and will never understand the folk who live here who always got something to say negative about their own hometown. Mm-hmm. There are guests in our city still from Houston as well as uh, Maryland, okay. as well as its entire national CBS crew right. and many sports enthusiasts from all over the country who are here for this second round. This is a big deal. And it doesn't work. It wouldn't happen without our investments. We knew we were going to host three years ago. We didn't know who we were going to host. And so uh, Birmingham does love sports. You do have to make the necessary investments in this intersection of sports and entertainment um, and people visiting our city and our residents and families here who already live here having the opportunity to enjoy this in real time is a big deal. And we should celebrate ourselves. We should pat ourselves on the back. We should take a moment and pause and, 
and appreciate it. Not beat it up for not being perfect because I don't know any city that's perfect, right. but we should love on this moment because it is a really, really big deal. And um, shout out to Birmingham. Hey. March, March Madness right here. Hey, can we give it a little round of applause for March Madness? And all the beautiful things that we do have coming to the city. I'm not going to run this uh, Hot Topics too, too long because I really, strong her, Shonda, I, I, you know, the more that we talk about this and the more that I research you and, of course, the, the uh, program all the way around, just impressive all the way because, again, you have some incredible women that really do need to be recognized. And I guess the question is, is that can you remind us, uh, as far as our audience, about Strong Her, what the program is all about, and and why you formulated this? So in 2018, mm -hmm. or 20, yeah, 2018, 18. the mayor, mayor came to me and said, hey, I know we have some outstanding women here in Birmingham. I want to recognize them during National Women's History Month. Can you help me? And I said, sure. Then he walked off. <laughs> so, <laughs> which is normally, right. <laughs> so here I am thinking, oh, my goodness, I have to live up to this and deliver on something. So I reached back out to the mayor, and we came up with the initiative known as Strong Car. And the ER is H-E-R. We know we have some strong women, some amazing dynamic women here in Birmingham, but these are women who are working behind the scene mm -hmm. to make a difference. So many times what I've heard from people is, you know, we always see the regular people get recognized. Mm -hmm. What we are learning about Birmingham are these people who are lifting Birmingham up and working mm -hmm. behind the scenes, mm -hmm. and we're giving them a little shine. No, yeah. and that, they deserve the shine. I think when you think about this month, a lot of it is from a historical standpoint of women who've made impact uh, via past. Uh, what I like about Strong Her is that it, it, it acknowledges strong women in real time. Right. Um, that we appreciate the word history, um, but we want to talk about what the impact women are having right now in the Birmingham community, and it's big. Um, <laughs> if it was called Women's History Year, we can go to 365 right. easily. We can do one every day but, because that's how many women out here are making a difference. But speaking of that, Shonda, how many women are we honoring this year? So we are honoring about 34 women in March. That's only because we received so many nominations, it was really hard to make a decision. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple of extra ones near the end of the month. Okay. Now, it was kind of easy for the two that were sitting in here today, though. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I personally, Terry alone has <laughs> personally helped me um, through so many years here in, in Birmingham. Uh, working with the uh, with the YMCA and um, been hand in hand with her on a lot of, number of different initiatives. And Andrea, I'm so excited of all the work that you're doing in Inslee as well. Um, Lazy, it's, it's nice to be featured, you know, with with Mayor and everything else like that. But you know, what is it about your program that, or better yet, you know, your nomination that has kind of made you reconsider, you know, the the definition of strong her and and how important this is to what you're trying to achieve as well. Who's going first? Who's going first? I know. I'm going to put Andrea on the spot. I'm going to put Andrea on the spot. Terry, Terry, I already know her answer. So. Oh, that's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I mean, strong her, when I received the nomination, I was, I've watched it, maybe I watched it for the first time last year and I watched the nominations and it's, it's an amazing initiative for the city of Birmingham to um, take on. But um, I think I was floored when I received the call or the, I'm not sure, Shonda, if it was a call or email um, about the nomination. But I think that it's added value for the work that I'm attempting to do, not attempting, the work that I will do yeah. in Inslee. Um, and I I think God orchestrated orchestrated all of this right. for my per, me personally right on time. He's the master orchestrator. Um, but this is just... Another way to make a bring awareness to Inslee and the work that we are doing right now. And that's the fun part about it because, you know, we talk about in the culture, you know, people buying blocks and that has been a, a point of contention and, and conversation moving forward because how ownership is important, you know. But I guess the thing is, you know, tell us more about the projects and, you know, how is that? Because you're actually doing it in real time. You're, you're you know, you're buying blocks. You're, you're actually out here purchasing property. But what are these projects and what is property about? So um, Inslee Social is an amazing project. It's, it's maybe a, two blocks away from Ramsey McCormick um, on Avenue E. Um, but this project will encompass an entertainment space with a small amphitheater, a huge garden bar, some housing, affordable and market rate townhomes, market stalls um, for 
they'll be able to experience, to experience whether or not like they want their to business move into inside brick and of a temporary brick and mortar space. Mm -hmm. And we'll have a farmer's market on site to okay. provide fresh uh, food options, fresh produce options, and tons of food trucks um, to address the lack in our community of uh, food options. So we, we've we heard from our community. We've done the proper research, and we are giving them everything they said that they wanted. Hey, yeah. Isley, yeah, yeah. Isley, you coming through. Come That's on. right. Yeah. Isley, it's happening. And there's so much love that needs to be given to that, that to Inslee. It really mm -hmm. is. So I'm, I'm excited. Go ahead, man. Look, we got to unpack this. Okay. Um, there is... Sometimes we can isolate something such as our childhood home to sentimental value or recall the street uh, we grew up on, whether candy lady or riding our bike or uh, first fight with somebody to put a stick on our shoulder, right? But then there's a way to multiply that and say, listen, I'm going to invest in this entire area. I'm going to mm -hmm. take not just a, this, this house in this block or what's happening in this block, but I'm going to spread it out. And I think... Um, that sentimental value turns into having an idea, which is turns into a dream, which turns into a vision, right. which now is um, something tangible that we need to find a way. No, I'm changing that, that we will support as a city mm. because this is the way to do it. So I'm excited for you. I'm excited for the residents of Inslee. I'm excited for the future of Inslee, and it's a big deal. Well, and, and I love the aspect of community. And one person, like I said before, Terry has always been central. You know, you started in the service sector. And um, I guess what I'm kind of curious about is, you know, about your career journey and the kind of work you've been doing. Because, like I said, you've always been the servant in my eyes, and I think that's one of the best positions to be in. And you come from that heart. So, Terry, you go ahead and tell us. So I have been known, I think, for the last 30 years as just – Plain old Miss Terry yeah. <laughs> at the YMCA. You either know me from going to the YMCA, seeing me talk about the YMCA. Uh, the YMCA is not everything that I am and do, but it has definitely been uh, all encompassing of who I am for the last 30 years. Mm. And so you ask, you know, how did this nomination affect this journey? Uh, it's amazing how many people say, Where you been all this time? <laughs> I've been at the Y. I've been serving your babies. Right. I've been serving your grandmamas. Right. I've been serving people. Right. And I've been doing it in different ways. I actually started my career at the 4th Avenue YMCA, hey. not the one that was downtown 4th Avenue, 21st Street. I started my career at the 4th Avenue YMCA that was founded historically only for African Americans mm. during a time where we could not go nice. to the one on 4th Avenue and 21st Street, even if you had all the money you wanted to. Nice. Um, that particular YMCA held all of our community's leaders, um, they were the board chairs, they were the mentors. And so as I look at our community leaders from 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago, um, everything was centralized at the 4th Avenue YMCA. And so to bring that to date, I've had the opportunity now to be the chief social impact officer, meaning mm. I get to do a lot of helping people all over this city. But over at the Northeast YMCA in Roebuck, we're about to do something transformational that's going to include housing with um, Habitat for Humanity. Okay. It's going to include a health care facility with Christ Health Center. It's going to include uh, mental health services from uh, Crisis Center and Impact Family Counseling. We're about to do Come something on, that's Robert. never been done before. And even though I think it's a great thing, there are going to be some folks, Mayor, who still say, well, why are you doing that? That'll be all right. I say, <laughs> we can do nothing. Be but right. we're going to do something, and we're going to do something, as uh, Andrea said, that's going to address some gaps that we've been talking about. So we've been listening to what the community said we needed. So we're talking about home ownership. We're about to bring it to you. You're talking about helping our babies progress in school. We're going to revitalize our YMCA and those okay. health and education services that we've always done. We're going to be able to do it better. And so I could have retired, but I said, no, 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 no. We got a little <laughs> bit more work to do first. Yeah. So Lord, here we go. Yeah. You're not done with me yeah. yet. <laughs> Let's go. So right now, this is the moment I believe is the culmination of what's all this been for yeah. to leave a legacy. 20, 30 years from now, I want to be able to say, we did that. Man. I like it. And, and that, you know what, we're going to take a quick break on that one because <laughs> I need y'all to just sit on that for a second, let that marinate because we're going to come back. And um, Terry, speaking of the YMCA, there have been some changes over the last year that have been very interesting. So we're going to kind of point on that. And again, y'all, reminding y'all, it's all about our strong her, women leading Birmingham. 
Shada Temple, Senior Project Manager, City of Birmingham Mayor's Office. Andrea Parker, CEO of Parker and Associations Investment & Company. And also Terry Harville, Executive Director at the Northeast Branch and the Chief Social Impact Officer of the YMCA of Greater Birmingham. And of course, Mayor Randall Woodfin and friends. It's the Magazine Spotlight on V94.9 WATV, where V stands for variety. Right back, y'all. V94.9 WATV is keeping you connected to the community each and every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. with the Magic City Spotlight, <laughs> hosted by Mayor Randall Woodfin. What's going on, man? Keeping you informed with the happenings around Birmingham and around your community. Hey, this is what's really hot and what's really going on. It's the Magic City Spotlight every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. on the all-new V94.9 WATV with Dee Dee in the morning. Isis Jones here, my lovelies, and I'm making a declaration for the new year. Let Santa Fe Massage and Wellness be the start of your self-care journey. Massages, body scrubs, facials, and products that help you melt are just a taste of what you'll experience. So do yourself a favor and book your getaway down 280 today by logging on to SantaFeMassageAndWellness.com or just give them a call at 205-408-7221. That's 205-408-7221. Self-care is the best care with Santa Fe Massage and Wellness. Did you know not washing your hands after using the bathroom can increase the spread of hepatitis A? Washing your hands with soap and water, as well as getting vaccinated, is the best way to protect yourself if you are at risk of getting hepatitis A. One dose of the hepatitis A vaccine provides long-lasting protection in up to 95% of those who receive it. For more information on the hepatitis A outbreak in our state, visit alabamapublichealth.gov forward slash IMM. Sponsored by the Alabama Department of Public Health, the ABA, and this station. Birmingham, get ready for the citywide Easter celebration. It's a family affair hosted by the Star Church at the Birmingham Crossplex. Sunday, April 9th, 11.30 a.m. This event is for the whole family, so everyone come out to enjoy a kid-friendly service and stay for a family fair. Doors open at 10.30 with music from V94.9, Chris Coleman. There will be a powerful worship service and message from Dr. Thomas Beavers. We have moonwalks, mechanical rides like the Mind Winder, and giant slides. You see why Easter celebration is a family affair at the Birmingham Cross. Plex. For registration and more details, go online to beatmetothestar.net. COVID-19 has disrupted our lives, but it won't have the last word. We will. Across Alabama, thousands are getting vaccinated to protect themselves and others. Find out where you can get the COVID vaccine today at alabamaunites.com. Please get vaccinated. If you have symptoms, also get tested for COVID-19. Alabama Unites Against COVID, sponsored by the ADPH, the ABA, and this station. Hey parents, here's a great opportunity and information how your child can get involved with STEM. The Alabama Aerospace Aviation High School would love to meet your son or daughter. Or both. They're enrolling ninth and 10th graders for the 2023-24 school year and a special lottery for 11th graders. Parents, transportation available. There are no geographical boundaries and the cost is absolutely free. It's a public charter school. This school is a first of its kind in Alabama, designed to help young bright minds not only reach for the stars, but maybe one day actually touch them. You can learn more now at A-L-A-A-H-S dot O-R-G. Smooth skin begins with hydrating ingredients. Olay Hyaluronic Body Lotion nourishes your skin with all-day hydration for deeply moisturized results that give you confidence like buttery soft shoulders like and visibly smooth skin like. Quench your skin with nourishing moisture from Olay Hyaluronic Body Lotion. Try Olay Hyaluronic Body Wash too and get skin your face will envy. Welcome to the Magic City Spotlight, Beeham Highlights. Everything is looking up like a skylight. It's all love, here's your invite. You ought to know we keep it cool, no frostbite. My lovelies, you are inside the Magic City Spotlight on V94.9 WATV, where B stands for variety. 
That is Mayor Randall Woodfin and Friends. And the conversation today is about Strong Her, Women Leading Birmingham. And we got three rock stars in the studio with us this evening. Shanda Temple, a Senior Project Manager, a City of Birmingham's Mayor's Office. Andrea Parker, CEO of Parker & Associations Investment Co. And also Carrie Harville, Executive Director at the Northeast Branch and the Chief Social Impact Officer for the YMCA of Greater Welcome Birmingham. And of course, Mayor Randall Woodfin. What up? What we up? Are in here. We are in here. We now, are. I, I'm, I'm going I'm to get a little personal real quick, man, because, you know, I, I've been in Birmingham forever. No, I'm not a born and raised kind of Birminghamian, but I am by, by association in that regard. One of my favorite places in the world is the YMCA. I have been a member pretty much since I moved here to Birmingham back in 07. And I support because I believe how important the organization is. Right. And one of the folks that I got to, you know, really spend time with was Terry. And um, Terry, you know, when I got the email about the uh, downtown location closing, my heart broke a little bit. You know, I, w I was kind of uh, uh, hurt in some regards because I knew everybody would be going over the mountain brook then. And then on top of that, I, I knew that uh, there were some changes coming for downtown. And I wasn't quite sure what that looked like. So to have you here today kind of kills two birds with one stone in the sense of letting people know that there is not just a, uh, a closing of a downtown location, but there is going to be a rebirth of sorts. Can you help us kind of unpack that? If I were to sing, I would say everything must change. Okay, okay. But in this, in, in, in this decision-making um, life of the YMCA, uh, the mayor talked about sometimes isolating things to its sentimental value. Mm. The downtown Y has been a pillar yes. in the downtown area since 1985. Yes. But guess what, y'all? Before that one, it was another one. And in this lifetime of the YMCA, you have to make some tough decisions. The pandemic was tough mm -hmm. on everybody. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people forget if it was tough on you, it was tough on us too. And it was so tough that the downtown Y literally averaged about 140 people coming into that big old four-story building every single day. And right. as much as we uh, want to make it work, I have to be honest to say the decision didn't just come last year. Right. It was over a period of time. And so we help people every single day in what we do. But if helping people begins to hurt the organization, you have to reevaluate. Right. And you have to make some tough decisions to say, well, what do we need to do in this moment so that we can serve you better later? And so the downtown YMCA did close its services for members on December 31st. However, we have looked at more buildings, options uh, in our community than I can recall, mm -hmm. trying to figure out who we're going to be now when we grow up. The good news is the building closed but our minds are still working. Our board of directors is still raising money right now. Our branch board uh, is still going on. It's not defunct because right. they recognize we've got to still serve people even in this meantime of figuring out what we're going to do. And so I think most of you may have heard or hopefully you've heard we're about to for free certify 1,500 lifeguards in this city. Big right? deal. Because we Big recognized deal. during the pandemic nobody was doing lifeguard classes on the news, folks kept saying, we need lifeguards. Well, somebody got to train them. Guess what? It costs money. Mm -hmm. And we're doing that for free and not so you can work at the Y. It's regardless. where We want you to have City of Birmingham pools open. Stop Thank closing. We need Thank them you. open all summer Thank long. You. But we need some lifeguards. We need some lifeguards. <laughs> so it's free for the people coming, but it ain't free. Right. And so we have a commitment uh, and I always say, no money, no mission. Those things cost money. So we're still raising dollars. Those YMCA members who went downtown who were on financial assistance, right. absolutely no one had to say, well, my branch is closing. And now I'm losing my assistance. Absolutely not. Because we're still out here raising dollars every day to make sure that no one lost their financial assistance so that they can go to a Mountain Brook, to a Shades Valley. And that's a blessing to say we have somewhere else right about three miles away where you can go. Um, I've been in this business a long time. Every other day we get an email from across the country right. where YMCA's are shutting down still. The Gaston YMCA just announced they're closing and they only have one. Damn. We're blessed to have options. But at the end of the day, I can say no one lost their job okay. in that closure. Okay. So we were able to disperse our uh, all of our Group X instructors. So when folks say, hey, I want to go to Randy's class, you still can go to Randy's class at 5 o'clock. And so most of our folks who were on scholarship came from the west side of town. 
it's a big deal for us to make sure we're not displacing folks, even though a physical building is not there. Um, we're continuing to do our community health program. So we're still doing diabetes education classes mm -hmm. right there on Graymont Avenue at Mount Zion Church. You okay. can come be a part of that program, get in a walking group, and guess what? Still get a free YMCA membership to make yourself a little bit healthier. Um, we're still giving folks jobs. And guess what? We still have a YMCA Youth Center mm. right downtown. And guess who's the director of that one? Tammy. Terry Harville. <laughs> so we're going to serve some people. And we're going to serve them well. So even in our youth center, now we're having to reimagine how can we not only serve children and young people, but how can we better serve families? Right. We're like three blocks away. Very much so. So it's one of those things where it ain't dead, y'all. We just got to reimagine who we need to be today. ISIS. Yes, sir. It's so unfortunate these are mounted mics because that's a real drop mic moment. Like literally can't drop. Just got to pass the conversation on now. Yeah. After that, all that dope is. I, and, and the thing about right. it, and the thing about it, and I will say this, right. and, I'll, and I'll definitely say this, that swim was the first thing I got into when I first got here. There were a group of old ladies that were in the pool, and I was the only, I mean, they had to be about 60s, you know, in their, in their 70s. These women would walk me down, okay? We would walk from the, do you understand, <laughs> Miss? I can't remember her name, but she we used to walk from the YMCA down the, down the University Boulevard and walk back in the morning yeah. about three miles. I mean, when I'm talking about, they, I would, <sighs> okay, okay, Miss Parker, all right, I'm right behind you. Like, but these women be, I mean, but I, but I found community. The wise, the wise the treasure. YMCA. It's and a so, treasure. And, and so, what actually is happening to the building? The Here. building's actually for sale. Oh, the building's actually for sale. It, it is for sale. It is for sale. You interested? Go see April Barnes. It's for sale. <laughs> okay. Now you hit something. The why is about what community. community. And so, what I found very powerful right about that last week when we were about to close. You saw people coming back from 30 years ago, mm -hmm. just having their own little parties, but recognizing, you know what? This brick and mortar is gone, yeah. but it really was all about us. Yeah. And so it's about community. Yeah, yeah. And the thing about the YMCA, the reason why we raise money for financial assistance, you can have a homeless person right. and a millionaire side by, by side, side and don't nobody know who is who. Right. We've served today. We serve foster children. We serve homeless children. We serve whoever will let them come. Because this city shows out when we come. I have, I have a few friends at City Hall that always laugh at me because when they see me coming, they say, are you coming to ask for money? <laughs> Absolutely. You know why? Because we got people to serve. No money, no mission. <laughs> and see, in Birmingham, I ask everybody. If, if you don't understand why these three women are a part of Strong Her, I don't know what you're doing listening this morning, for real, because that's the aspect of it and the community aspect of bringing folks together. And I guess that's the question, and I'm going to pivot off to you, uh, Andrea, is that we are uh, basically seeing a lot of other black-owned properties in Inslee. You know, a lot of folks are coming back. I've even looked, you know, and, and ran the streets a little bit, kind of seeing what y'all got over here. Because, again, it's just a, a love for that city. Um, do you see collaborations happening among local stakeholders to basically transform the community? Are you seeing a little bit more of that? And what are your thoughts about Ramsey McCormick and what it will do for downtown Inslee? It's a trick question. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh yeah, most definitely. We're 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 gonna do everything within our power to engage the community. Um, however, we won't stop. Okay. Um, Park and Associates owns 100% all the land that we're going to develop. Um, we've already started having those conversations with stakeholders in the community. Um, from the response we've received thus far, it's been positive. It's been exciting. But uh, to answer your question, yes, we will attempt to do our very best to make sure that everyone is involved, every every voice is considered. But um, the plan is the plan, right? You know, and I, I say this all the time. Um, Inslee has been desolate for quite some Come on time, now. right? Come on. Tell the truth. And it's yeah. a little different when you're from Inslee. You grew up in Inslee. Your grandfather owns the corner lot. Um, adjacent to all the property that you own. Mm -hmm. So it took someone taking a big enough risk to bring it back to life. And in my personal opinion, not to downplay anyone else who's tried to do work prior to me, but there hasn't been anyone who has taken the risk, um, putting their money where their mouth is to bring something like this to life. This isn't um, bank money. This isn't... Um, going to City Hall, you know, no, Mr. You can, Mayor, like I need $10 million. This is 
we took the initiative first. We made the plan first. Yeah. We we involved strategic partners like Abra Barnes right. and Ref Birmingham and yeah, yeah. Alabama Power yeah. to do market studies and feasibility studies to make sure that it made sense for us to build. Right. So yeah. we've done the work. Um, we took the risk first. I, no. Isis, can I? Yeah, I, come on. I wanna, make a plan. Like, I, I got to ask you, tell us your inspiration. Um, is there a person? Was there an event? Um, the motivation, the the inspiration you got to like just just go levels down in this to come to this point. Yeah. So for me, it the way it all happened is it was just one day, and I was working for the government at this time, um, and I went to visit my father and my grandfather at the at our family's electric company, and they were sitting outside, and I just stood there and I looked around, and I was like. Something has to happen here, you know. I remember when downtown Inslee was like booming, thriving. I used to go to Cotton's and Ideas on Saturday to buy clothes for church, you know. I know what it looked like firsthand to see people. We went to the doctor uh, right off of Avenue E, you know. So I just told them that my father had inspirations to acquire some pro property as well. So... Once we had that initial five, ten minute conversation, it was just let's go to work from that point. You I would imagine there are a lot of people who says why here or or you um you shouldn't or you can't. What's what's been your response or has that been part of the fuel of your motivation to keep going? That's definitely the fuel to my fire, but can't. It'll never happen. <laughs> and that's amazing. That's, a, that's something that I've also recognized with the uh, Strong Her uh, nominees and honorees is that y'all don't take no for an answer. That is something that is resonant. And I think a lot of us who are really um, instrumental in, in trying to make a different uh, play for our communities that we really do care about. And Ansley's been one of those, those places, too, where you just kind of like, okay, this should not be the situation here. And, again, taking the risk and being the person to make that step forward um, applause, sister, all the way around, Andrea. I thoroughly love that. I thoroughly love that. And the boldness, the boldness, Mayor, is is where it comes into and wanting something different for your community and for your people. Because sometimes when you're in the midst of that, you don't really see the exit strategy. You don't really see the possibilities. Yeah. And once you have a vision like that, Andrea, it's kind of hard not to, it's kind of hard to get out your system yeah. when you've seen it be better and you know that it's possible, and you know you have the resources and the experience in being able to do that. So uh, applaud, sister, to both of y'all for just taking on the, um, the, the the conversation, because I know it's it's lengthy, just like you said, you know, that's, that's kind of loaded. But it's, it's put your money where your mouth is, literally. literally. Okay, if you say you love your people, then do what you can to make sure that you step out there, whether you have a dime or whether you have $10 million. You know, take the initiative. This is your neighborhoods. These are the places, that, and it's not impossible. And then when you have, you know, gentlemen like uh, like Mayor Woodfin, at least have the conversation and open it up, but, but bring something realistic. And like you said, you did the research. It's not like you just walked in and say, hey, we need like 10 million right here <laughs> because this city needs it, and we like going down like, like fast, Mayor. But no, you, you actually have the conversation. And I think that's kind of missed sometimes. Yeah. I, and, and I think you can probably speak to Deshonda, you know, with your experience in, in journalism and then on top of that being events, you know, not events, but uh, but project manager um, for the city, too. You know, it's kind of like, well, how do you, you know, how do you purse that conversation with, with stuff like this? Because the community needs the help, um, but you do have to, there are steps to this. There is a professionalism to this, and these ladies exemplify that. Well, I will say that once we ran the story on Andrea, the response was incredible. So before I get to your answer, she said that your website crashed. Yes, like so if we can okay. just, I, I just, <laughs> that shows how people are really interested. So um, our business consultant, Abra Barnes, made, made the post um, and Strong Her goes live and we have account me in link on our website. And yesterday that site froze and like people couldn't. We because shut it down. Y'all shut Thank you, Birmingham. Westside, stand up, stand up. Well, Shonda, 
I mean, but that's but that's part of it. That's right. making an impact. That's that's actually taking the the the, uh, the the torch there. So I think that speaks to she's giving people what they want. Okay. Before you roll out an idea, it, it's it's great in your brain, but you need to do the research. You need to find out is this something people want? Is this something people will work? Before you start putting a bunch of money into it, you you have to do the research and pull back the layers. And that's what these two women have done. That's what our stronger individuals, our entrepreneurs have done. They're making things work in our city. They're benefiting from it. And also our residents and our visitors are benefiting from it. No, all the way through. And with that, we're going to go to break real quick and come <laughs> on back because, man, I really kind of want you to kind of delve into this a little bit more and and how we are basically um, withdrawing her with our non nominees and Absolutely. our honorees. And, of course, like I said before, it is the Strong Her Women Leading Birmingham. we got three powerhouses in the studio. Shout the Temple, Senior Project Manager, City of Birmingham's Mayor Office, Andrea Parker, CEO of Parker and Associations Investment Co., and Terry Harville, Executive Director at the Northeast Branch and the Chief Social Impact Officer for the YMCA of Greater Birmingham. We love it. Mayor Randall Wilfin right back. Maxie Spotlight on V94.9 WATV. Every Friday and Saturday night, starting at 10 p.m., V94.9 WATV turns up with Party with a V. Hey, is this where the party's at? With DJ Bo Slim, DJ Socks, DJ Greg C, DJ Magic Mike, and DJ Steam. The best DJ! The best DJs with the best variety of music in the world! It's Party with a V on the all-new V94.9 WATV. For too long... Our communities have felt tested by the pandemic. Today, each of us can quickly and accurately get tested for the virus. And if you test positive, you can take steps to take care of yourself and keep others safe. If you have symptoms, find out where you can get tested for COVID-19 at alabamaunites.com. Alabama Unites Against COVID. Sponsored by the ADPH, the ADA, and this station. Associates. Commitment is a term that we honor. I just want to take a moment to let y'all know that Ace and Associate and Mr. Cordell Davis gave me excellent customer service in finding my first home. They was with me throughout the whole process. If you're looking to buy, sell, invest, or for your commercial real estate needs, there never was a moment where I didn't know something, and I would recommend them to anyone. This is Cedric Wiley. Thanks again, and Ace and Associates, you rock. Let Ace and Associates Real Estate guide you. You're located at 2024 3rd Avenue North, Suite 105, or you can call us at 205-482-0405. Ace, you are just awesome. Awesome. Welcome to the Magic City Spotlight, Beham Highlights. Everything is looking up like a skylight. It's all love, here's your invite. You ought to know we keep it cool, no frostbite. V94.9 WATV with V stands for Variety on the home of the DD, the morning show. Ice is shows with you. You all really have to catch us on the Facebook Live, on the mayor's uh, Facebook and Instagram. And he's way, he, you know what? I think you missed your calling. I really do. <laughs> You are quite the uh, comedian, and I love it. But we got it going on. Every Saturday from 9 until 10 is the Magazine Spotlight. And, of course, today we are celebrating Strong Her, Women Leading Birmingham. Um, the mayor kicked this initiative off back in 2018, and yeah. it's been going strong. Uh, Shonda, thank you so much. Shonda Temple in the house, Andrea Parker, and Terry Harville, part of the conversation. And we appreciate, again, just the representation. All of March, we're celebrating each day um, an incredible woman that is making Birmingham bigger and better. And again, uh, just amazed at the the community aspect and the, the simplicity of it. You know, we just got off the live with um, with Terry, and I had to admit, you know, you know, even coming back, I love spending the money that I do. I couldn't imagine spending twenty one dollars at some other fitness place because I know that my money goes to actually help out the community, right. um, different programs. I didn't know I can get assistance, but I'll check into that. Um, but it was just different layers and layers of that. But to, it's the, the simplicity of helping right. is a small thing. I see so many people on social media, Mayor, that have so many opinions about everything. But when I come back and ask a simple question, what are you doing for your community? Nothing. No, silence. You're not going to get a response. And look, here's the thing. I'm going to go global first. There is literally an assault in the state of Alabama, come on. Um, in Florida, and other places across the South, because it started in Florida, and now other people want to test it on literally attacking, okay, creating laws that are against... DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. I want everybody to know when you talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, 
that's not isolated to race. Right. Okay. We're also talking about women. I want to be very clear on that. Um, that um, women have not had uh, their fair share. Right. There have been laws against. It wasn't. It wasn't until the what, nineteen twenty, when women can even yeah. vote. So, like, put that in perspective for a second. And so, I think um, that's a, that's a global perspective. Locally, I think there are a lot of women doing amazing things in Birmingham. And sometimes, so people are so, um, I'm not going to say dependent, but only look to the government to solve issues. Right. Where in the private sector, uh, whether it's um, it's Parker or in, in the public sector, like um, Ms. Har- Ms. Harville, like women are doing amazing things. They are making community impact. They are making a difference. They're not waiting on anybody. Uh, they're not. They're definitely not listening to the trolls online telling them uh, what they shouldn't be doing or um, always complaining. That they're actually out here in the field, in the community, making impact. And I think it's the city government needs to partner with people like this. The city government needs to highlight them, acknowledge them, love on them, thank them, encourage them. If there's an opportunity to provide in, um, investments and resources, we should be in a position to do that if we can. And I think we have to continue to find the, the other uh, Harvels and the other Parkers of the world who are doing major work in Birmingham, Alabama. No, and, and I have to kind of pivot to Shonda on that as well. Because, uh, I mean, not not trying to, you know, like blow you, you know, blow your head up or anything, Shonda. Blow it head up. I mean, but... <laughs> blow it up. I mean, from journalism to the, the work that you've done here in the city... I'm kind of surprised we we don't have a like a you no know, like a a, a a professor or a PhD type of uh, strong her honorary position or nomination because girlfriend you know every time I've seen you you know in the, in your space you you're you're walking and you're talking in your purpose and I think the one thing is that you're able to see other women correctly and um, completely and so when you know when you when you pick these honorees when you when you look at these women. And you, you're, you're really kind of um, um, just kind of narrowing down on, on what it is that they're actually bringing to the city. It, it, it's kind of like, you know, you're, you're already kind of like just sending rays off yourself of, you know, just kind of like it's almost a mirror and a reflection of, you know, not even I'm not saying that in the sense that, you know, that you're just picking folks that, that you like. Because I really have to say the, 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 the selection of women is, of course, it's not your regular because we do get caught up into, oh, girlfriend, go again. You know, you have the same five people. Not again. Not saying these women ain't wonderful and fantastic. But you have picked women that I was like, OK, I don't know about this sister. I don't know about this organization. And I love that, you know, where it's just like, you know, these are women who are making um, space and making um, noise in their own realm, but better yet, need that platform. So how does this platform help to to really kind of build women up and, and give them that exposure? So, Isis, thank you so much for that. When we looked at the nominees, we wanted to select women First of all, we didn't know much about, we researched them, but also we wanted women, when you read them, you f- if you're feeling low, we wanted their stories to elevate you. Mm-hmm. We know that there are so many people out in the community, they need a pick-me-up. That's what Stronger does. It picks you up, it empowers you, it makes you feel like you can accomplish the day. Some of these women have had hard backgrounds, yeah. but they've survived. Some of these women, they that's all they've done, and so, when you sit down and you read this, whether it's on your way to work or at a break, we just want you to walk away just feeling great, feeling like these women feel, that you can do anything, that nothing is impossible. So, and also learning about Birmingham. There have been so many stories where I had no idea. That part. I had no idea that this was going on. Mm -hmm. And so now it's motivating you or me to get involved and give back. There may have been A, B, C, but now you're finding about finding out about X, Y, Z. No, because you have like you know, strong her, bold her, bright her, <laughs> fierce her, smart her, brave her because of her. And I think that's the one part too, man, that I've really been excited about. It's kind of like there's so many like I did not know that. Oh my God! And you know, and you see the 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 I, I think the the ribbon that yes. that runs through Birmingham and Betty yet. 
kind of purse us off from all these beautiful women yes. and how it's changing because of us. Well, let's tell you the other change as well. I think Shonda started a trend. I'm seeing other organizations um, mm -hmm. find ways Just to bite highlight it. women. Just bite it. It's uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> you can bite. Just uh, like, but it was it started here, and that's sh that's shout out to Shonda Temple. But no, it's good to see. I'm literally watching uh, other organizations do the same thing, so it's good to see the spread. Now, ladies, I I, I kind of want to tip into your your programs a little bit more because I, I want everyone to walk away with enough information to well, number one, support, and number two, be motivated to actually do some things in their own community. I know with you know moving forward with with the YMCA, are there any other initiatives? Because you've pretty much ran down everything, Terry. I mean, and I know, I know you have a wealth of knowledge in that aspect, but is there anything that you'd like to speak to in the sense of what you need folks to actually be active about? Absolutely. So during the pandemic, we actually raised, the YMCA raised about $3.6 million quietly. Well, now we're going wait, wait, loud. Wait, 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 wait. Hold, hold, how much? Three point six million. That's without telling anybody publicly. Oh, y'all just, just gonna y'all just gonna keep it to yourself. That's how y'all feel. You know what? Okay. We just said <laughs> when everybody said it can't be done, we said, well, let's see. Okay. And somebody in a board meeting said, don't let a good pandemic go to waste. <laughs> Work it. And so we're coming out of this pandemic saying we have a plan. This is what we want to do. Now is the time we need other folks to step up to the plate because we've raised $3.6 million, but y'all know it's going to take more than that to get it done, right? And so now we're publicly letting you know what we're doing. And you don't have to be one of the big million-dollar givers. Mm -hmm. what, what you say? If you got five hundred, dollars I'm coming for you. Okay. You got $5,000, 100000 I'm coming for you. But every day outside of this project at Northeast, we've got over 1,000 uh, middle school students that we're serving right now just in school programs with our Y Achievers program, our Youth in Government program. I am a product of the YMCA Youth in Government program. Two weeks ago, I had students from Parker High School and Ramsey High School in the State House taking over the Senate and the House floors, okay. debating legislation with people from all, from young people all over this city, I mean, all over the state, and they were representing us well. And so it was an honor for me to go down the hallway and show on my daddy's picture when he was in the legislature and say, this is what you can do. Now go in there and Show them what you got. And I think that's the one thing that we miss. And it's so simple, just as you were saying, Mayor. It's like, it's just kind of like you have to be able to show these kids what it looks like. Yes. Okay, you can't show them from Inslee. You can't show them from, you know, from, from the South Side. You can't, you have to actually put them in these places. And it takes money to be able to do Absolutely. that. So, you know. No money, no mission. To, and, and that's the thing, Terry, like, but you have many programs who are, you know, in, just in the like YMCA, that. just that's like right. that. And it's very simple. And again, the information is right there on the website, you know, and better yet, if you really, you know, get pressed about it, go on down the 4th Avenue to talk to Miss Terry, okay? She'll be more than happy to sit here and lay <laughs> all on, of that come out. Come over to the youth center. Because I promise you, this woman, no matter what she's doing, has always taken the time out for me, and I would come over there with some crazy situations. But also, Andrea, that is the same thing. You know, with, with the projects you have, what do you want to see from people? What do you want folks to kind of garner from this, this, this honor, honor and this, this nomination? Um, what do you want folks to walk away and how can they help? Um, I think what I would first want people to know is uh, quiet the noise and face the facts. Okay. You know, when people are saying, you know, this can't happen, um, the public sector isn't willing to get behind a, a project in our community, just being very candid. Um, quiet the noise. Get out. Do the work if you want better for your community. You yourself have to lace up your own bootstraps, reality, and take the initiative. Secondly, what I need everybody to do is go to www.inslysocial.com, <laughs> click the button, count me in, so that you can get all of the updates we plan to um, keep everyone involved. And, um, Tell them that website again. www.ansleysocial.com. And one, take the next thing, take pride in your community and know that no is never the answer. We we'll never take no for an answer. Now, I am, and I think that's the, the, the basis of all of it. And I think that's what spears a lot of us on. I think that was one of my favorite motivations when I was growing up. As soon as somebody would tell me no, I was kind of like, oh, I can't do it with you. That's what that meant. Yes. That does not mean I cannot do it. And that it does not mean, and I think everybody needs to hear that. When somebody tells you no, that is not, I would say it's not a, it's, it's a delay. It's not a, a departure. You know, that's just God simply saying, okay, just go back to the drawing board, tighten some things up, put it on paper, make it plain. And, and move forward. That does not mean stop. That does not mean this is impossible. 
you know, the word itself tells you that you are possible, yes. you know, so it's kind of like that's a, you got to kind of be focused on that aspect of, but I love your heart for Inslee, you know, and I think it's one of those cities that needs all of that because those are the pockets where, and I mean, and, and Mayor, you can attest to this, and, and I hate saying it like this because there's such a derogatory mentality about certain pockets of the city, but I'm like, unless you're going to go back there and help out and do something, why are you complaining about it? I don't want to hear it. All right. I mean, listen, Inslee once had 40,000 people. Now it has 4,000. And shout out to the Andrea Parkers of the world who says, listen, this is home. I'm going to make it better. I didn't abandon it. I'm going to actually invest. So if you're not investing, I don't want to hear it. Your opinion is irrelevant. Um, you can keep your Twitter fingers, social media fingers to mm -hmm. yourself. Um, if you really want to do something, um, come help on the cleanup day. Yeah. yeah. Start start small. And that's what I always try to tell folks, you know, when everybody's like, like, well, what can I sit there and do? Okay, if you're not volunteering, if you're not putting at least an hour a week, then that's a, that's minimum, okay? Go ahead mm -hmm. and contribute maybe $5, $10 a month mm -hmm. to whatever organization that you feel like is important. You know, like I have a little pocket that goes off to the Alzheimer's Association, um, you know, the cancer situation, or, you know, the Red Cross, you know, make these donations. The YMCA gets my money every month. Okay, so I know I'm doing something passively, you know, passively. But the the part of getting out there and volunteering, and this is one of the reasons, again, why Shonda picked these incredible women, because they're purposely putting their purpose into play with these actions, okay? Like you right. just heard with Terry, 30 years? Right. With the ones, yeah, girl? And, I mean, and still got the, you still got a, a smile on the face, still out here serving and passionate as ever, Mayor, you know? So how do you... Wake up every day and make that happen because you have that, first of all, built in yourself. And you get built up with different places and different people, just like you said, with the inspiration that came from your family and being able to see this. If you didn't see the fact that, some, that uh, uh, a member of your family owns some property, you don't think that you can do it. Okay? And when you see a black woman out here, I'm, I'm motivated. I'm trying to figure out, okay, so again, <laughs> we back in Inslee. I was trying to get away from sitting here doing anything in Inslee, but now, you know, but I have my good friend, you know, Jarell over at Renew. So it's, it's just, I, I pick up on these different things. And, but when you see the history of it, kind of, it kind of discourages you, Mayor. When you see things it that have, have been initiatives that have been placed in the pocket and put in certain places it does. and how it gets kicked down, how do you combat that mentality? Uh, this is the balance. I think when you hear their, when you hear what Terry Harville's doing, um, when you hear what Andrea Parker's doing, um, it, it balances out the conversation. I think, again, as I stated earlier, uh, we tend to we tend to punch our own selves, literally, like beat our own selves up. Mm -hmm. And we forget that there are more solutions than there are problems. Right. And the Terry Harville's of the world and the Andrea Parker's of the world, um, they are doing the work. And it's more, it's more of them out here that are actually doing the work. Um, we have to find them. Um, we have to stand shoulder to shoulder with them and highlight them and um, and show that, hey, here is a solution <laughs> to this issue you've been complaining about. Here is someone that's actually doing the work. You should join them. Um, you should congratulate them. You should acknowledge the work, right? Don't say nothing's happening because that would be a just that would just not be true, right? That would be a flat out lie. Right. It's actually too much good going on in Birmingham. Um, I think as a city government, we've just committed to highlighting that good. Um, and that's our counter. Our counter is to highlight the good. And I, I think that's a, a mic drop in itself right there. Definitely. So, Mayor, I, I thank you and I thank these beautiful women for being a part of the conversation for Strong Her Absolutely. Women Leading Birmingham. Um, we are going to close up slowly, but I want to get these city announcements. I, I kind of look forward to the city announcements <laughs> each week, you know, and I had to do them last week, and that's kind of a hard job, Mayor. You know, I, 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 don't, um, I don't know how you do it. but It's all good. It's all good. There are a lot of good things going on in the city. The first thing I want to say is something that's on everybody's mind. Um, driving from point A to B, wherever that is in the city of Birmingham, street paving is underway, everybody. <laughs> Yeah, street paving, okay? <laughs> street resurfacing. Don't, um, don't complain. It's underway. <laughs> it's a $12 million project currently in the queue, started this month in March of paving streets across the city. Uh, please check out birminghamal.gov slash neighborhoods. Again, that's birminghamal.gov slash neighborhoods to see the streets that's closest to you that are being paved. And the other thing I want to say is March Madness, everybody. 
The second round is tonight in our city at Legacy Arena. I am not sure if any tickets are available, but if you want to go check it out, if not, our city will literally be highlighted in primetime TV for the world to see, okay? Uh, tonight, the first game is Auburn um, playing Houston at 6, 10 p.m., um, and the second game tonight in the city limits of Birmingham at Legacy Arena um, is Alabama versus Maryland at 8.40 p.m. Again, um, if you're not able to be in the um, in Legacy Arena, you can watch the games and live on TV as well as um, HBCU Spring Coming is happening. started Stop yesterday. It. It's Stop happening it. right now. Um, it kicks off um, today in Lynn Park. Um, wear your hoodie. Um, because it's a little breeze outside, but I think you will enjoy yourselves. Um, for those who are graduates of HBCUs, um, for those um, who have an interest in attending an HBCU, for those who don't know anything about HBCUs, hit Land Park today and enjoy yourselves. That's what I got for you, Isis. Hey, and uh, Mayor, what are you reading? You know, we got to get that yeah, in. Yeah, 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 everybody. I'm the social animal. I'm almost done. This is my third um, round of reading this book. This is a non-fiction book, um, which is very unique, told with fictional characters, just about life, love, character, and so many other things, including achievement. With that said, Mayor Randall Wilton, thank you so much. And friends, again, y'all, this has been Madison City Spotlight. Strong Her Women Leading Birmingham, Shonda Temple, Andrea Parker, and Terry Harville. Make sure you check out the show again on all your favorite social media platforms following the mayor. And again, we'll see you next Saturday from 9 until 10 a.m. with the Madison City Spotlight. Right here on V94.9 WATV. Boom. <laughs>